So my name is Angela Grummet. I am a fifth year PhD student um, studying supramolecular chemistry in the chemistry department at the University of Cambridge. Um, the group that I work for is supervised by Professor Jonathan Nitschke. And we all, well most of us, <laughs> work on um, what are called supramolecular capsules, which are essentially very, very, very small boxes. And these boxes can come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. Um, some are called tetrahedrons, so those are like, um, like a pyramid with a triangle base. Others are cubes. Um, and these different sized cages have different sized cavities inside of them which means that you can put different size cargoes inside of the cages. You can put a small cargo inside a small cage, a medium sized cargo inside a medium cage, and a larger cargo inside a largest cage. My focus particularly is to make these cages move and to carry their cargoes to different physical spaces. Um, so if you have different cages that respond to different stimuli, then you can send the small cage with the small cargo off to a different physical location than a large cage with a large cargo inside of it. And when you separate these two cages with their different cargoes inside of them, you then separate the cargoes. The capsule that I'm using in this experiment is highly colored, it's purple, and as you can see, it's currently residing in the bottom layer, which is water. The top layer is colorless, which indicates that there is no capsule present in the top layer. I then add a stimulus, uh, which causes the, the capsule to change its solubility preferences, which essentially means that the capsule no longer wants to be in water. Um, instead, it prefers to be in the top layer, which is ethyl acetate. In order for the stimulus to um, come into contact with the capsule, the system needs to be mixed a bit. Um, and then after it's mixed, you can leave it set, so the two phases will separate out, and the capsule, which is, again, purple, uh, can be seen to be in the top layer, and the bottom layer is colorless. A second stimulus is needed to transport the capsule from the top layer back into the bottom layer. And again, the two layers need to be mixed in order for the capsule to come into contact with the stimulus, change its solubility preferences, and transport back from the top layer into the bottom layer. So as you can see, the purple is now solely in the bottom layer which means that the transport cycle has been completed and the capsule has successfully migrated from the bottom layer to the top layer and back to the bottom layer, illustrating the perfect control we have over the movement of the cage and its cargo. So chemical separations are extremely expensive, both environmentally and economically. Um, in the U.S. alone, about a quarter of all the energy consumed by the country is devoted to industrial processes. And about half of that energy is uh, used separating chemicals. Um, so this is extremely costly. And if we're able to do this without using energy, that would be huge savings, um, both cost-wise and obviously it would be good for the environment as well. My experience as a PhD student here at the University of Cambridge has been incredibly positive. I really enjoy my research. In fact, I have more fun doing research than any PhD student has a right to have. Um, because I enjoy it so much, I'm really feeling the pull towards academia as a career choice. Um, but I know that this is the point, you know, transitioning from PhD student to postdoc to independent researcher that women start to fall off the ladder. There are lots of different reasons for this, but it does make me just a little bit wary of continuing um, my career progression. That being said, uh, my experience here has been that my gender doesn't matter. Um, my group is about 50-50 men and women, and nobody makes me feel bad for being a woman. Um, all I have had here is support. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what lies ahead.